In 2020, we got a fluffy kitten and named him Coco, short for COVID cat. We've cohabited in peace mostly now for over four years, so I thought it's time to review him and share him with the world. I'll be discussing the good, the bad, and the weird aspects of living with a Maine Coon cat like Coco. He keeps me company and follows me absolutely everywhere I go. Doesn't matter if I'm making coffee, having a shower, or just working. As someone who's currently self-employed and working from home all the time, his company has been a very good addition to my mental well-being and it's been much needed. It's always a nice surprise to know that he's just a few meters away. A second good thing is that he has gotten really, really long. Why is that good? Because it gives my friends something to comment on when I shove a photo of him into their sight of vision. So instead of nodding along politely and saying, wow, that's a cat, they now have a chance to say, wow, that's a long cat, which is a much more interesting conversation. Another thing that's positively surprised us is that he has been very easy to train. When he was young, we decided we didn't want him to be leaving fur balls or hairs on kitchen counters or dining table. So we just taught him to never go on these tabletop surfaces. So another thing that's quite good is that he often interrupts me while I'm working. Frequent enough to remind me that sometimes I also need a break away from my laptop. Don't let his appearance fool you. He might look big and fluffy like a miniature lion, but he meows like a five-day-old kitten. Come down. The last good thing about him I want to mention is that he is a really, really tame, relaxed cat. I mean, he looks like he could be a fighter due to his size, but he's actually never aggressive. He's like the most gentle cat I've ever met. If he at any point feels like threatened or in danger because, oh my God, we got the cat carrier out, he might have to go outside and leave the comfort of home for a little bit, he will hide and he will hiss. As soon as you touch him or pick him up, he'll just go limp and meow a lot. So the hiss thing is just a facade. He will never actually intentionally scratch you or hurt you. Now let's move on to the bag. So right on the top of my list is the fact that he is not the most cuddly cat in the world, except in the mornings. It's already pretty difficult to get out of bed and start the day. I think it makes it even harder. So this is definitely a negative thing. Another bad thing is that he is basically a fur factory on legs. Everywhere he goes, he leaves behind a bit or actually a lot of himself. His fur color has become a surprisingly influential factor in our wardrobe and furniture decisions. When we moved into our new home, we had to buy three new sofas to furnish the place. As an architect and a designer, I would have loved to experiment with different colors and materials. I had dreams, you know, leather, suede, but sometimes you have to make compromises. So now I live with Coco and also 50 shades of gray in my life. Up until a few years ago, I would say my wardrobe was 90% black. But ever since getting Coco, I realized that if I didn't want to look like a human lint roller all the time, I have to make some changes. So now whenever I do any shopping, I subconsciously veer towards buying light colored clothing. Because we live in an apartment without a garden and we don't really want to let Coco outside. So he's mostly an indoor cat and this makes me feel a little bit bad sometimes. Thankfully, we have three balconies in this apartment. So very often I'll just open the balcony door and let Coco out to enjoy a bit of fresh air and to watch the neighborhood birds from the safety of the balcony. Over time, I've realized that Coco has developed his favorite spots on the balcony. And that is basically the gutter. It's not very glamorous and it's definitely not very clean. So I try not to think about this too hard when I'm kissing his paws or when I let him into my bed. Now let's move on to the weird. He used to be a fearless, curious explorer. He would actively jump into the sink to get attention and he would just like sit there and chill while water splashed on him. If we tried to bathe him, he would play with the water. He was also fine with me putting him on the leash, taking him for a walk in the snow, in the park, next to the lake. And we even took him to our friend's place for a cat play date. And he was not scared at all. He was really, really like friendly and inquisitive. But I think around the one year mark, he changed. He wouldn't enjoy being on the leash anymore. He would get scared if we got the cat carrier out to take him any places. And he would like hiss if he could smell another animal nearby. 
And another thing I probably mentioned already is that he likes to be close to me, but he'll not be so close that you can really touch him or cuddle him. But I find that if I pick him up and rock him back and forth for a while, he'll stay willingly a bit longer in my arms. But you can tell he's not fully relaxed on my arms. He's merely tolerating me until I let him go and give him a treat. Good Coco, good Coco. <sighs> Full of hair. So what's the verdict? How do I find life living with a Maine Coon cat like Coco? Well, it's definitely a roller coaster of emotions and surprises. I have really loved having him. And if you're thinking about getting one, just go for it. Seriously, Maine Coon cats are so cute and they have the best personality. I am already working on getting my second cat. I just have to um, be a bit more persuasive with Leon. Convince him that he can live with more cat hair in the house.